Our story begins with a radical departure, a setting forth. He hears the call, and the journey commences with leaving. To discover who he will be, he must leave the place of safety, his homeland. He must strike out on a journey. His wanderings will change him as he travels from that place. First, he will encamp in this place, and second, there. He will meet adversaries along the way who will try and halt his progress. There will be moments of triumph and despair as he goes. Sometimes he will walk, other times he will run for safety. From time to time on his journey, he will steal what is not rightfully his and be rewarded for it greatly. But the goal of this journey is a surprising one. Somehow, no matter what direction he wanders, he has the feeling that he is always headed home. Though his journey may change him, may change the very nature of the world, he is seeking to return home. He is seeking his promised land, the place where he can be complete. Though he has been exiled from it, he carries with him the hope, however faint, that someday he will find his way back. This is the very nature of his journey. He is trying to get home. This is the journey of our lives. We set out from home, and always we are hoping the path will lead us back. This is the journey of this week's Torah portion, Parshat Lech Lecha, in which Abraham sets out from his father's home at God's command, searching for a new home, his promised land. And this is the journey of every baseball at bat. As soon as the batter leaves, all he wants to do is get home again. <laughs> it's a strange sport, baseball, where your forward progress is circular. There's no taking of territory. There's no charging up to the net. It's just a man running around in circles trying to get home. Baseball is the story of departure and return, of exile and redemption. This is, of course, the Jewish story, too. From that first moment in which God tells Abraham to leave and go to the land of promise, Judaism has existed in the space between Galut, exile, and Geulah, return. We know the sense of longing of the runner stranded on second, hoping against all hope for the hit that will bring him home. We know the agony he feels when the ending ends without redemption, the elegy for runners who will never be redeemed. But baseball is also a sport of hope. There is no timer to call an arbitrary end of the game, and with every pitch until the final one, there is hope for redemption. We who watched the Astros score a run in the ninth and two in the tenth and two in the eleventh, we know from hope. <laughs> it's like the words of Hatikva, the Israeli national anthem, Od lo avda tikva tenu, our hope is not yet lost. Hatikva bachnot al paim, the hope of two thousand years. Lihiot am chovshi be'artsenu, to be a free people in our own homeland. No matter the inning, we hold in our hearts the hopeful dream of home. Lord Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, former chief rabbi of Great Britain, teaches that Judaism's major contribution to civilization is a vision of hopefulness. Judaism, he teaches, is a religion in the future tense. When God introduces God's self to Moses, God goes by the name Ehyeh Asher Ehyeh. I will be what I will be. The first words God speaks in creation are Yehi, let there be. The future tense is the Jewish tense, the expression of hope. Your high school English teacher taught you that a story must have a beginning, a middle, and an end. A story starts with once upon a time and ends with happily ever after. But Rabbi Sachs points out that Jewish stories are different. He writes, the Jewish story begins with God's call to Abraham to leave his land, his birthplace, his father's house, to travel to the land that God will show him. Several times, seven times, God promises Abraham the land, yet he has to haggle with the Hittites to buy one small plot in which to bury Sarah. Jacob and his family are forced into exile in Egypt. Genesis ends with the promise unfulfilled. 
Then the exodus begins. God calls Moses to lead the Israelites back to freedom in the promised land. Now we feel the story is about to reach its closure, but it doesn't come. In the final scene of Deuteronomy, we see Moses still on the far side of the Jordan, granted only a distant vision of the land. Again, the natural ending is deferred. Rabbi Sachs continues that the Tanakh as a whole ends in Chronicles 36, 2 Chronicles 36, with the Israelites in exile once again, this time in Babylonia, and Cyrus giving them permission to return. We are almost back where we began, in the same region from which Abraham and his family first set out. When we are just about to complete the narrative, we roll right back to the beginning, deferring the dream but holding it in our hearts. We end our prayers with Aleinu. Bayom hahu Adonai echad ushmo echad. On that day, some future day, God will be one. God's name will be one. The Jewish story is never complete. The final inning, inning is never played. Always there is the possibility of more. This is the hope that informs our lives and shapes our worldview. Rabbi Sachs reminds us this ultimately was the dividing line between Judaism and Christianity. To be a Jew is to reply to the question, has the Messiah come? With the words, not yet. We see this through our history, from the Bible to today, through all our exiles, through all our journeys, both the ones taken by choice and the ones by necessity, the Jews choose hope. The exiled psalmist writes that if he should ever forget Jerusalem, that eternal symbol of hope, his tongue should cleave to the roof of his mouth and his hand should lose its skill. And so in every age we have kept that hope alive, and that hope, in return, has kept us alive. Other peoples have disappeared after just a single exile, but the Jewish people have survived more than can be counted. The great 20th century theologian, Dr. Eugene Borowitz, teaches that if the measure of one's hope is one's willingness to continue in the face of adversity, then it is clear why Judaism is the religion of hope par excellence. In the 1976 statement of reform Jewish principles, which Dr. Borowitz helped to author, it ends with these striking words on Jewish survival against all odds. The existence of the Jew is an argument against despair Jewish survival is a warrant for human hope. So this is the story of Judaism and of baseball. They are both about our journey home and our unwavering hope that someday we will get there. They are both about Geula and sorry, they are both about Galut and Geula of excellent of exile and the hope for redemption. So tonight, as we root, root root for the home team. <laughs> Let it be a reminder that the Jewish condition is one of hope. It's one game each. There are so many innings yet to play. And until the final one, two, three strikes are out, it could be anyone's ball game. Shabbat Shalom. Go Astros. <laughs> <laughs>